mixtures of gases. Okay, this is going to help you with that experiment 11A and the worksheet that has been a little bit of a mystery because I didn't get to it before. Okay, so kinetic molecular theory says that the components in a gas mixture act independently of each other. That's because there's so much space between the particles, the sizes of them don't matter, and when they bump into each other, they're moving so quickly that they really don't interact at all. So a gas that is pure hydrogen is going to behave in exactly the same way as a gas that's a mixture of hydrogen and water. And this is a weird thing about gases. Liquids and solids do not do this. So the pressure due to any individual component in a gas mixture is called the partial pressure of that component. So if you have a mixture of two gases, they are each going to behave like they're the only gas in the container. They're each going to exert a pressure. The total pressure on the container is the sum of those pressures. Since it's not the total pressure, each of the pressures from the individual gases, we call it the partial pressure. And the partial pressure of any component is that component's fractional composition times the total pressure of the mixture. Um, so this is a useful little equation. The partial pressure equals the fractional composition times the total pressure. Oh, let's just do a real quick example there. So what if I had a mixture of um, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and they were in equal parts? What would be the fractional composition of hydrogen? It'd be half, right? 0.5. So the fractional composition would be 0.5 for each. If we had one atmosphere as our total pressure, then the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas would e equal its fractional composition, so 0.5 times the total pressure. If the total pressure is one atmosphere, then the hydrogen gas is going to exert half an atmosphere of pressure, and the oxygen is going to exert half, a pressure, uh, half an atmosphere. So let's think about air. So air is a mixture of different gases. Um, the composition can vary a little bit, but mostly it's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.9% argon, 0.04% carbon dioxide, and then some other gases in even smaller amounts. So most of air is nitrogen gas. Those nitrogen molecules in the air exert a certain pressure. 75% of the particles are nitrogen. They exert 78% of the total pressure. The pressure they exert is independent of the pressure exerted by the other gases. Oxygen molecules, 21% is of the gas is oxygen. It exerts 21% of the pressure. My son sent me earlier this fall. You've heard the, you know, the optimist says the glass is half full and the pessimist says the glass is half empty. The, op the, the chemist says the glass contains 50% water, right, that's half full, 39% nitrogen, 10.5% oxygen, 0.44% argon, and 0.06% carbon dioxide because it's half air. This is what happens when your children become chemists, too. So fractional composition, what is that? That's the percent composition divided by 100. If something is 50%, that's half, right? 50% is 0 0.5. 50% is, you take 50%, you divide by 100, you get 0 0.5. So in this gas mixture where we have 80% helium and 20% neon, if the total pressure is one atmosphere, then the helium is going to exert a pressure of 0.8 atmosphere and the, the neon is going to exert 0.2. And that goes back to the e little equation 
the pressure of the helium is going to equal its fractional composition. So it's 80%. So 80% divided by 100% times the total pressure. Here the total pressure is one atmosphere. So that equals 0.8 times 1.0 atmosphere. So we get 0.8 atmospheres. And similarly for the neon. 20% the fractional composition is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times one atmosphere is 0.2 atmospheres. Just like percentages have to add up to 100%, the partial pressures have to add up to the total pressure. So let's do an example. A gas mixture contains 64% methane and 36% ethane. We don't need to know the, the structures or anything about the methane and ethane. If the total pressure is 1.44 atmospheres, what are the partial pressures of each component? So the total pressure, P total, is 1.44 atmospheres. For the methane, <clears throat> excuse me, for the methane, it's 64%. What would that equal as a fraction? 0.64. We just divide by 100, 0.64. So that's its fractional composition. Ethane is 36%. Its fractional composition is 0.36. So if we want to know the partial pressure of methane, the partial pressure of methane, I'm just going to call it M, is going to equal the fractional composition, 0.64, that doesn't have any units, times the total pressure, 1.44 atmospheres. So 0.64 times 1.44. Um, that would have two sig figs, so 0 0.928 atms. The partial pressure of ethane would equal its fractional composition, 0.36, again times the total pressure. 0.36 times 1.44. That rounds to 0 0.5. What the heck did I do? No, that's okay. Never mind. I was thinking it needed to add up to 1, and it wasn't. It needs to add up to 1.44. 0 0.52 atmospheres. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, so the partial pressure of, of methane is 0.92 atmospheres. The partial pr pressure of ethane is 0.52 atmospheres. And as a check, we can add these together and see if they add up to the total pressure. So 0.92 plus 0 0.52 is 1.44. They do add up to the total pressure. Any questions? That brings us to Dalton's law of partial pressures. Dalton's law says that the partial pressures of the individual components add up to equal the total pressure. So it's often expressed this way. Um, P total, the total pressure, equals the partial pressure from component A plus the partial pressure from component B plus the partial pressure from component C, where these letters A, B, C are just standing for different components. It doesn't matter how many different gases are in there. The partial pressures of each of them added up will give you the total pressure.
Um, this is similar to like making up a box of fruit. The weight, the total weight of the box of fruit is going to e equal the weight of the apples in the box plus the weight of the bananas. Does that make sense? So if we had five pounds of apples and seven pounds of bananas, what would the total weight of the fruit in the box be? Twelve. The total weight is going to equal the weight from the apples plus the weight from the bananas. Just add them up and equals twelve. Pretty sure everybody's okay with that, right? Oh, oh, hey, something finally made sense today, right? Yay. That is exactly the same as Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. The pressure from each gas adds up to give the total pressure, just like the weight of different things in a box adds up to give the total weight of all the things in the box. Okay, so... Here we have a sample of hydrogen gas mixed with water vapor. Vapor is just another word for gas. This is water in the gas state. So we have two gases, hydrogen and water. The mixture has a total pressure of 745 torr. The water vapor has a partial pressure of 24 torr. What's the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas? Well, total pressure is going to equal the pressure from the hydrogen plus the pressure from the water. The pressure from, uh, I'm sorry, the, pre the total pressure, we're told, is 745 torr. And the pressure of the water vapor is 24 torr. How do we find the pressure of the hydrogen? We need to subtract. The pressure of the hydrogen is going to equal the total pressure minus the pressure of the water. If we do this with fruit, everybody gets it right. The total weight of the box is 15 pounds. There's 10 pounds of apples. What's the weight of the bananas in the box? Don't tell me 15. Don't tell me 25. It's five, right? If, if all the fruit weighs 15 pounds, there's apples and bananas, and there's 10 pounds of apples, there has to be five pounds of bananas, right? You can do that although you're not admitting to it right now. But then this gets confusing because it's strange. The math isn't hard, it's just strange. And so your mind says, ah, can't do that. Yes, you can. The pressure of the hydrogen is just the total pressure, the 745 <coughs> minus the 24 torr. Did I do that right? I didn't use a calculator. Yeah, 721. Any questions? Silence. We talked a little bit about scuba diving um, and how it's not good to uh, hold your breath as you come up from scuba diving because your lungs could explode. Um, it's also important to have the right mixture of gases in the scuba tank. Our lungs perform best at an oxygen partial pressure of 0.21 atmospheres. That corresponds to air at one atmosphere with a percent composition of 21% oxygen. That's the air we regularly breathe. Our bodies are accustomed to that. It, that works really great for us. You go up into the mountains, the total pressure decreases, 
And so the total, the partial pressure of oxygen also decreases, and that's why you get lightheaded and out of breath if you try to run around up a grant rope. You're not used to it. This can lead to a condition called hypoxia. Hypo, again, is below. It's less. It's not enough. Hypoxia means not enough oxygen or oxygen starvation. If you get below 0.1 atmospheres of oxygen, that's considered severe hypoxia and can result in death. You just can't get enough oxygen. Here's a little graphic from your book. Um, so here is hypoxia um, below 0.21 atmospheres of oxygen. The safe range goes from that up to about 1.4 which your body is fine with at exertion. Um, if you go too far, if you get too much oxygen, it's also toxic. Oxygen toxicity. So again, just like with water, water is something that we need to live, but too much water will kill you and not enough water will kill you. You got to have oxygen to live. Not enough will kill you, too much will also kill you. Oxygen toxicity comes around uh, 1.4 atmospheres of oxygen or higher. Uh, symptoms include twitching, tunnel vision, convulsions. And this is not likely to happen to you walking around Fresno, right? There's no, like, pockets of concentrated oxygen you're going to run into. So it's not something we need to be worried about. But this can happen to divers. So... When you breathe pressurized air that has the same composition as the air at the surface, you can get into trouble. So at the surface, the total pressure of the air is one atmosphere, and the partial pressure of oxygen is 0.21 atmospheres. You go down 30 meters below the surface, now the pressure in order for you to be able to breathe has to be four atmospheres. 0.21 times four atmospheres is 0.84 atmospheres of oxygen. That's an elevated partial pressure of oxygen. You go down further, the total pressure getting bigger and bigger, the partial pressure of oxygen gets greater and can cause oxygen toxicity. You also have increased partial pressure of nitrogen. So normally we have 0.78 atmospheres of nitrogen, 30 meters breathing regular air compressed. We've got 3.12 atmospheres. Too much nitrogen isn't good for you either. It's called nitrogen narcosis, sometimes called rapture of the deep. They say it feels a bit like being a little bit drunk. You might say, well, that's not so bad. Well, that could be bad if you're several meters underwater and now you're exhibiting poor judgment and lack of coordination, right? Not a good, not a good plan. So deep sea divers, ones that are going really deep, they use specialized mixtures of gases. One of them is called heliox. That's a mixture of helium and oxygen. And so the heliox helps to avoid nitrogen narcosis because it doesn't have nitrogen in it. You don't need the nitrogen to breathe, to live. So we could do problems like this. A diver breathing, breathing heliox with an oxygen composition of 5%, wants to adjust the total pressure so that his partial pressure of oxygen is 0.21 atmospheres, the ideal pressure. What would the total pressure have to be? Well, what we, our equation earlier, which I really don't like because it just gives words, but I'll write them out. The total pressure, no, that's, start over. The partial pressure we said was equal to the fractional composition times the total pressure. That's a mess. Your book doesn't introduce this, but I can't handle it. I'm going to do it anyway. The partial pressure of oxygen would be PO2. The fractional composition is the Greek letter chi. It looks like a fancy X. 
times the total pressure, P total. We are given a percent composition. How do we get the fractional percent? I mean, fractional composition. Divide by 100. So that's going to be 0 0.05. That's the fractional composition. The partial pressure is uh, 0.21 atmospheres. We want the total pressure. We need to rearrange this equation. We want total pressure by itself, so we're going to divide by the fractional composition on both sides. And these uh, chi's cancel out. The total pressure will be equal to the partial pressure of the oxygen divided by its fractional composition. So 0.21 atmospheres divided by 0.05. Point two one divided by point oh five. So four point two atmospheres. So that heliox would be good to breathe at a total pressure of four point two atmospheres, or about thirty feet below the I'm sorry, thirty meters below the surface. Any questions? So we have a staring contest? Maybe not. Okay, let's get to something maybe a little more, I don't know if it's more interesting, but more practical for assignments that you need to do. Collecting gases over water. This is what we did in lab last week. We collected gases, hydrogen gas, by bubbling it through water. Our setup was a little different. We had a, a udiometer, a large tube inverted that was full of water to start with, and then we generated hydrogen gas, and it bubbled up and displaced water. And what we have up here is hydrogen gas plus water vapor. How did the water vapor get there? We didn't put it in there. What does water do when you just leave it out? Does it stay there forever? It disappears eventually, doesn't it? What happens to it? It evaporates. So the water evaporates into this space that's got hydrogen gas in it. We, we call this a wet gas. Because what, what is a towel if it doesn't have any water in it? It's dry, right? What if you put water on the towel? Now it's a wet towel. This is a wet gas because its gas has water in it. So we've got hydrogen and water. Now, what dries faster, a towel in the dryer or a towel in the freezer? Wet towel. Which one's going to get dry faster? Dryer. One in the dryer. Why? Because it's warmer, right? How fast the water evaporates depends on the temperature of the water. The pressure of this water vapor, how much water vapor there is, depends on the temperature of the water. So people have done experiments and made measurements and stuff, and you can just look this up, and that's what we did in lab. We had a more detailed table, didn't we? This one just gives um, vapor pressure for every 10 degrees. That one gave it to us for every two-tenths of a degree, lots of numbers. But we can just look up the partial pressure of the water vapor. So we can do quest answer questions like this. Hydrogen gas was collected over water. Total pressure of 758 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What's the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas? Or as your experiment says, what's the pressure of the dry gas? Just the hydrogen without the water. Well, we have to think about Dalton's law of partial pressures. The total pressure of that gas sample equals the pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the pressure of the water. 
We are told that the total pressure is 758 millimeters of mercury and that the uh, temperature is 25. They don't give us the partial pressure of hydrogen, I'm sorry, of water, but we can look it up. So we go to a table, here's 25, how convenient, and 23.8, that's the pressure of water vapor. It's called the vapor pressure. It's the partial pressure of water. So it's 23.8. Units are really important. That's millimeters of mercury. You can't subtract millimeters from inches. These are agreeing. They're both millimeters, so that's okay. So the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas is the total pressure minus the pressure of the water vapor. Just like figuring out how many pounds of bananas are in the box. 758 minus 23.8. 758 minus 23.8. Calculator says 734.2 millimeters of mercury. How should I round that number? This was subtracting. So we have to look at decimal places. The 758 has uncertainty in the ones place. The 23.8 has uncertainty in the tenths place. So I need to round this to the ones place. So we're going to call this 734 millimeters of mercury. Any questions?